Hi guys, today at Topic I'm going to show you the basic principles of balancing the DJI Ronin using the DJI Assist app. So now that the rig is balanced and set up, we can actually continue to switch it on. To switch it on, all we do is just press down on the power button on the back for a second or two until it switches on. Let's get in the zero position and there we go. Now the Ronin hooks up to the DJI Assist app via Bluetooth. And when we switch on the rig, we should see a little green LED light there. If you see that light, it means it's ready to hook up via Bluetooth. If you use the remote that comes with it and switch the remote on, you'll see the moment that this connects, the LED changes to red. So here we go. Now the remote has control over the rig. Now Bluetooth has control over the rig. The DJI Assist app that we're going to be using to set up this rig with is at the moment only available on iOS. So there we go. Let's have a look at setting it up. Now firstly, just make sure that Bluetooth is switched on on your device. Now the rig will not show up in, on your device list under Bluetooth. It's sort of hidden, but the app sees it. So let's open up the app. Now the first time you start up the app, you'll be prompted to create a, a user account. So just go through all those steps and the first time you hook up to your own rig, you might be prompted to create a password for it. So we already set that all up and we're ready to connect to our rig. There we go, we're ready to start working with the app. Now first thing to do is just have to tap on viewer down here and we have to look at the current power usage in all, each of the axes because that will give us a good indication of how well the rig is balanced. Now those little numbers should preferably be under 10, if you can get it under 5, even better. The closer you can get it to 0 will make your life really easy. So you can see at the moment there that it's slightly out in tilt and roll. Now we can go into it and find tweak it. To do that I'm just going to tap on more and tap on motor kill. So that switches off the motor without switching off the whole rig. Make our life easy to rebalance it. So let's do that quickly. So as I saw that the tilt axis was slightly out. So let's have a look at what's going on here. And I'll just do this fine adjustment. and roll was slightly out as well. Okay, so now that we're ready, let's go back into more and switch the motor back on. Go to viewer and have a look at our power usage. Here we go, that's much better. As close to zero as we're probably gonna get it for today. Right, so every time you change camera, we change lenses and the weight changes drastically. We need to recalibrate the system. So I'm just going to tap on that. And you'll see that the camera will move around a little bit on the rig as the rig will try and find its balance point and, and try and figure out the weight. So before you do the calibration, just make sure there's nothing in the way of the rig because it might move around unexpectedly as it's trying to determine the weight on it. There we go. Now at this point in time, if the rig makes a funny noise or it starts to oscillate or vibrate like mad, just either kill the motor right there or just switch off the battery as quick as possible because that means your rig is seriously out of balance and out of whack. So once we've calibrated the system, we can just go back to viewer and make sure all the power use is all quite good and stable. And now I'm going to tap on gimbal, tap on motor, and the next step would be to auto-tune stability. And once again, the rig will start to move around now as it tries to figure out the weight on it. Now this is it's a personal thing, but it seems um, when you use the auto-tune stability function that the rig sets itself up a little bit too stiff, so you're more than welcome to 
fiddle around with those little numbers, the stiffness of the motors in each of the axes, and you can actually trim it as well and set it up. Now the best idea of this after trying to figure out what each of the little numbers do is just to change it quite aggressively to one way or the other, pick up the rig, play with it and feel the difference on the rig and what it's doing. The next step would be just to tap on gimbal again, so it's to go into smooth track. So if we look at the smooth track adjustments, we'll see you have an option to change speed, dead band and acceleration. Well, speed basically influences how quickly and how snappy the rig will try and follow you and stay in the center. Dead band is the amount of play we have on the handle at the top before the rig starts to react. And acceleration is a little bit difficult to visualize, but that is the abruptness at which the rig comes to a stop when it snaps back to the middle. So I'm just going to adjust those numbers a little bit aggressively and show you what it does. Right. So let's change speed, make it really slow, go to dead band, increase this quite a lot, and I'm going to tone down acceleration as well. So let's see how the rig reacts to that. Pick it up. And you see now, I have a lot of movement in the stick before it starts to react. And when it starts to react, it's really, really slow and smooth. Right. So that will just be a matter of personal preferences. And it's well worth playing with it and tweaking it and setting it up for how you want to use it. Now also a really important little setting is under more we have briefcase mode that we can switch on or switch off. I would advise if you're not going to use briefcase mode to keep it switched off because it might cause problems while using the rig. So let me show you what briefcase mode does. What we do is we take the rig, tilt the handles around and up and there we go, we're in briefcase mode. This is a really handy mode to use, but once again, if you don't need it, rather switch it off because if you tilt the handles too far, the rig will think you want to go into briefcase mode or make your life really difficult.